We're back with another Life on Film episode, and this one is all about Kodak Gold 200, specifically in 120. I used to shoot this film a lot in 35mm, but I just recently got around to trying it in 120, so it's going to be sort of a first impressions of the film for me. I just scanned in eight rolls of this film, so we're going to go through the scans together, and I'll kind of talk about the photos themselves, but also characteristics of the film, why I decided to shoot Gold 200 and bought a lot of it, and uh, whether or not I'm going to continue shooting it moving forward. I did scan all of this film using my Lumix S5 II and the negative supply setup. I'm going to do an entire video on that process and specifically converting the negatives and just what that workflow looks like for me nowadays. Uh, it had been a while since I scanned color film, so now that I'm doing it again, there have been some updates and different softwares that are available now, and there's a whole lot to get into for that, but we'll save that for another day. So big shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I'll tell you more about them in just a bit, but for now, let's dig into these scans. Right off the bat, we've got some photos from the Eclipse, and I didn't shoot photos of the Eclipse itself. I just shot photos of Forrest and Molly and Taker uh, in the backyard as we were sitting there. And just the light as it was changing leading up to the Eclipse, that to me was like the most interesting part, just looking around, not actually at the Eclipse, but seeing the way the light looked all around. Uh, I had fun shooting some photos of Forrest playing, and uh, this photo of Taker, it just has a really interesting kind of shadow. Everything was dark, but there was still like really hard shadows. I would love to have like a full hour of this kind of light every day, similar to like golden hour or blue hour. Give me a little bit of that early eclipse hour. That light is just awesome. This little photo of Taker here in the chair here in the office. You can see right behind me now there's like direct sunlight coming in and it's like hard light. This one it was kind of a cloudy day so it was a lot softer coming in and uh, I just loved the way this looked with the light behind him and kind of above him. Nice soft light. I like that one. One of my best friends, Kevin, came and stayed at the house for four or five days a few weeks back and uh, shot some photos along the Scioto River here in town. Kevin was looking for some fossils or bones, anything we could find, and uh, he came up on some turtle bones and parts of the turtle shell. And the day that Kevin came into town, that also happened to be the day that we had a new family member join us. This is Peach. She's about four months old. She's a golden retriever, and we were not planning on getting another dog by any means. However, there was sort of a situation put in front of us, and we had an opportunity to uh, give this girl a much better home than she had, and we're very, very glad we did. Uh, she is just an absolute angel. So yeah, shot quite a few photos of Peach, uh, especially that first week. She's been here for almost a month now, and she's just grown so much since then. Before Kevin left town and went home to Minnesota, I had to shoot some portraits of him, and that started off with uh, a photo of him and Elliot together before Elliot went to school. Pretty sure Kevin is now Elliot's new best friend as well. They had uh, a lot of fun together while Kevin was here, so he's already looking forward to the next visit. But I want to talk about these photos of Kevin and Gold 200 specifically. So far from what I've scanned in with this film, it seems like it has a little bit more of a green and yellow tint to it than something like Portra 400. However, uh, it hasn't been anything like unmanageable. This photo in particular, I felt like this was sort of a good stress test. Where Kevin was standing, there was so much green and yellow reflected light from the sun bouncing off the grass and the trees and the creek. And it took a little bit more work than some of the other photos, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. You can still see a little bit of that reflected light in Kevin's face, but it doesn't feel unnatural. In this environment, it feels like that's what it looked like in person. Also, the t-shirt, shout out to uh, at books are sick, found his videos, really dug what he did, and turns out he's also a photographer himself and has been watching these videos for a long time, so it's a small world, but I bought a couple of these shirts because I love the design, and uh, as soon as Kevin saw it, he loved it, so I just gave him the second one. If you're a book nerd, a reader, check out at books are sick, good dude. Another thing you should check out if you're in need of a website or domain would be the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Long before they were ever a sponsor on this channel, I made my website mattdayphoto.com with Squarespace because it was a no-brainer. Tons of different templates to choose from, 24-7 customer service, everything is drag and drop, easy to customize, 
If I can build a website, I promise you can too. It's a great place to not only show your work, but also sell your work. I personally have used my own online store to sell prints, zines, even photo books. I have one available right now. All of that is possible thanks to Squarespace. If you're a photographer, I cannot recommend it enough. You should check it out at squarespace.com for a free trial. But when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash mattday and use the code mattday at checkout. That'll save you 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now we'll jump back to it. Now this roll was actually not shot with the RZ67. This was made with a Pentax 672 and this wild projector lens. My friend Matt Seal, seen in these photos, he's been on the channel plenty of times. He brought this lens, it's a projector lens that's been modified for the Pentax 67 mount. So I shot a roll using his Pentax 672, but he's actually let me borrow the lens and I'm gonna be doing a full video on the lens and shooting with it a lot more because it's really interesting and it has this distinct look to it. But I managed to get a couple quick portraits of him and Nathan using this lens. We got rained out most of the day that we got together to go take photos. So I only had time for a few quick photos here at the house, but definitely plan on shooting more with that lens and I'll be sharing all of it in a video when I do. Got some more photos of the Scioto River on a completely different day, but this was after some heavy flooding that we had. When I went to shoot this photo, I was specifically drawn to the blue from the sky reflecting off of the tar lines here. Blue skies, but if you zoom in, you can see it was actually hailing when I shot this photo. Bright blue skies. We've had some weird weather here in Ohio lately, to say the least. I love this portrait of my dude Jalen. Uh, this was actually a tough one to color correct. I still feel like I could do a little bit more cleanup to remove the kind of yellowish tint to it, especially in his facial hair. This was probably one of the most challenging ones when it came to scanning and color correcting. I still don't think it's actually there yet, but I'm still, still getting used to this new workflow. I love this photo of Molly. This was right before her run club on Tuesday nights. Uh, I've talked about it plenty of times here on the channel before, but she's organized a run club that meets several times throughout the week and uh, it's just grown so much and I just love seeing her like this doing her thing so uh, yeah I love this photo. Some photos around town just walking around looking at the light looking at the lines. This is another one that was kind of tricky to scan. I wasn't planning to shoot the photo I was just kind of looking through the viewfinder as I was walking and uh, I saw this guy off in the distance walking Shot a photo really quickly, and I was probably a couple stops overexposed than I should have been. Uh, color negative film typically handles overexposure pretty well, but I was shooting directly into the light, and I don't think Gold 200 is as forgiving as something like Portrait is. But again, this was more just an error on my part because I wasn't really metering for this particular scene. It was just what the camera was set at, and I saw it, and I shot it really quickly, but... I don't know. It's different from what I normally shoot, but I kind of like this one. This broken glass in the parking lot, it was all just glowing in this bright blue from the sky, and uh, I just like the way the color contrasted with the yellow lines in the background. This old Dodge from the 40s, uh, I happened to see this car as the guy and his dog were getting out, and I stopped and asked him if I could shoot a quick photo, and then we sat there and talked for like 45 minutes. Turns out he has a lot of vintage cars and he often rents them out to movie productions. So I guess this one was used in Cincinnati a couple months back for some Robert De Niro movie that's not out yet. Uh, he had another one that was used in that Bones and All movie with Timothy Chalamet. They shot a lot of that in Chillicothe, Ohio several years ago. Still haven't seen it myself, but super nice guy. We talked for a while and uh, hopefully I'll be shooting some more of his old cars sometime soon. Here's a photo that you've kind of already seen in a recent video. I shot this exact photo with the M11. Uh, this was sort of the beginning of my new project on Route 50. I wanted to go back and reshoot it on 6.7 just because I thought I kind of want to use the RZ for this project and do it on film and not digital. I don't know what it is about my brain. It's hard for me to like... I don't know if it's the the archival aspect of the film versus the digital aspect and the tangible and yada, yada, yada. Uh, I wanted to go back and reshoot that photo on film, and I did, and I like this version better. So I think for this particular book, uh, this project, which has no end in sight, it will probably be years before I finish it. 
uh, I think I'm going to be doing it on 6.7 and on color. That could totally change, but that's how I'm feeling right now. Some photos of Forrest in the backyard swinging. I tried to shoot some photos of him swinging with the RZ, like as he was actually in motion. It's not very easy, and I kind of missed focus, but I still like this photo a lot. And last but not least, some photos from the driveway. This was like right as the sun was setting. I was out there skating with Elliot, and I went through a roll. Elliot has been skating more lately. Like when I first got him a skateboard, he was kind of just rolling around like on his knees or sitting on his butt and riding down the driveway. Now he's actually been skating, skating, and he's getting more and more into it. He was super nervous to skate down the driveway by himself without me holding his hand, and now he does it all of the time. He's getting so comfortable with that and turning, and uh, I feel like we're going to be spending a lot of time this summer in the driveway, and I'm very excited about it. Super proud of him for just working through that, overcoming that fear, and uh, I wanted to shoot some photos of him that night on his board. He earned himself a new pair of proper skate shoes through all of that as well, so he can he can put the Under Armour shoes away. He's got some proper Lakai's now. Some portraits of Molly, of course. I kind of missed focus on this one, but the closer photo, uh, I really like the way this one turned out. And Forrest, who doesn't love a baby in a big t-shirt? If that's not just the best thing ever. He's about to turn two in a couple of weeks, which is insane. And Nora just turned nine, and Elliot will be eight in November. They say it goes fast, and uh, they ain't lying. But those were a lot of photos on Gold 200, and I honestly really like the way this film turned out. When I first started scanning it in, I thought, dear God, what have I done? Why did I shoot all of this on Gold? Turns out that was more of the scanning and color correcting, not the film itself. I've been able to get really clean results with this film, and the price, specifically, is what drew me to wanting to shoot this film. The price of portrait film these days, that ain't for me. Uh, unless I was being paid to shoot it, like if I was buying it for a job, of course. It's an incredible film. I used it for many, many years. Used to use it at weddings all the time. Nowadays, though, it's just personal stuff. The price of Gold 200, you really can't beat it in comparison to stuff like Portra, so. I've already ordered more of it, and I plan on shooting a lot of it this summer, so as I shoot more and more of it, I'm sure you'll see plenty of it here on the channel. But if you have any questions or thoughts of your own about Gold 200 or any other recommendations you might have for some color film that isn't going to, you know, starve my children and break the bank, leave them in the comments down below, and uh, I'm happy to try out some more stuff, but... That's all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was a long one, but I hope you enjoyed it. Love you guys very much, and I'll see you soon.